Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have gameplay from Galacron demonstrating why White Mane not being in the game, just like yesterday's video with Leapers, or two days ago at this point, really, really affects certain compositions. And instead of being Leapers this time, we're talking about Exodia Mechs, a composition where if you just combine basically the vanilla copies, maybe some small buffs to make it slightly stronger, but vanilla copies of two six stars, three five stars, and a ghoul, and suddenly your board is hundreds and hundreds of stats. And you don't have to scale it. You don't have to do anything. And if you're falling behind in games, these kind of compositions, this is your bread and butter. You're like, oh, I can't scale to keep up with people. I'm just going to die. We shoot the moon. We look for the combination of those five, six cards. And suddenly strong. Steal those wins. All right. Enjoy. My boy. My boy, Rendell. Probably freeze this board. Or not freeze, but like, don't roll. That's nah, not true. We need economy still. I like this card. But I'd much rather have the stats on the Rendell. Do you take Nest Matron? Potentially, because we had double death rattle minions on the board. You could have taken Nest Matron. You won't proc it the first turn. And then the second turn, you buy up uh, the second Imprisoner. I'm not sure Nest Matron makes the cut there. If you had an economy unit opener, probably. But without, it's kind of tough to justify. So we can raid someone later, right? Every day? We always raid somebody. There's your economy. There's your damn economy. Parasol. Demon Quilbor. Or Menagerie Mayhem. They're all just kind of... Honestly, they're all just kind of easy. Parasol. Just good. And then we'll level... Chinese curve because we like this pair there's no way in hell we're, we're attacking six times right yeah no way in hell that can happen might as well order for power then doing Tabasco shots that sounds miserable I think I'll pass Pepper Overload, bro. Mm, I'm gonna need one not bad hit here. Cool. Alright, now we have some like very awkward scenarios where we can hero power to force a minion to be taken because it can be a higher tavern tier. Kind of a, a niche opportunity to synergize Rendell with the hero power. But if we do so, and we're leveling in the same turn, we're basically getting like the minion of the tavern tier that we're going to each turn. Ideally, we just push the level up button and go to five and start, you know, if with an extra economy that we have, have the ability to roll the board into a five hero powered into a six and take that for the next turn then get multiple sixes you can use a coin to discover a two drop exactly like unless there is a, a card that we really want on the tavern tier we're going to and we have that minion or that you know one lower than that on the board it's kind of hard to do oh my god the dogs are back I can hear them they've returned home So my brother's here. He has two dogs. My sister has a dog as well. Where's my dog? 
Uh, you currently see her back right now. That's what the image is. If I pee... <coughs> oh. She heard the dogs. <laughs> I know. That was anxiety. I, I hear you. Come here, girl. It's okay. Come on. It's going to be fine. Go lie down. Sorry, sorry guys. A little bit of anxiety there. Guess we'll just take a four. Because I'm not going to use the gold to level and roll. Uh, egg's pretty good. Big Fernal's okay. If we play the card to the board, we do have to sell something. Which I guess we could do with the egg pretty easily. We just toss you down, take the attack. Throw this all in reverse. It's okay, girl. And uh, I guess Rendell needs health. Puppot needs health. We have, I forgot about Parasol there for a second. A good boy. That's Lee. M's currently underneath, underneath the desk. She is anxious of the dog sounds. There are dogs here. Did you hear the dogs? I did hear the dogs, girl. It's going to be okay, though. They're just dogs. It's the Void Pog. He's a good Void. Does your brother have as manly a beard as you? Um, he does not have a beard. Hmm. Kind of a cool pair. Kind of awkward anti-synergy on our board, though. Well, we can roll a board and then take a six with Rendell. We can take the egg, roll the board, sell an extra thing, and then take it. <laughs> I mean, the egg's probably worth it. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. The question is, do we sell something if we get a 5 on this board? I guess that's just a moot point when you can't even get a 4 on the board. Like, what is this board? This is bullshit. Do you know if you yawn at them and slowly blink, it reduces their anxiety? I'm pretty sure the, the little mind games that we could do with the dog aren't going to outweigh the fact that there are now currently four dogs that are at maybe at most 50 feet away from where we are right now, making a lot of noise. But if I blink at him, he might forget that his friends are here. But it is a good tip for reducing anxiety in dogs. Just probably irrelevant in this situation. All right, let's uh, clear up some, some of the little minions, please. Mm. Could be worse, I guess. We do trim down some damage here. We lose, though, unfortunately. We lose pretty hard, too. Damn. We're just really bad at combat RNG today. It's holding us back. I'll tell you what. Combat RNG, not our friend. Reroll. Run it back. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Direction. It ain't Murlocs. It is very hard to play Murloc in this Murloc in this kind of lobby. Uh, it could be another triple potentially. It is. Manted Felbat Dark Gaze. When you try your best and you don't succeed. When you get what you want, but not what you need. 
you take the seafood slinger because it's by far the best other option. I think that's the end of the lyrics of that song. And we re-roll again next turn. Okay. Thank you, Omega Buster. I think our RNGs just set the zero this, this day. I think that's all it is. I think there is some hidden RNG modifier behind the scenes today. And it's just set the zero. It's like every fight that possibly could be a loss is a loss. Every last time. It's nuts. It's not one game. It's like six games in a row. <laughs> Yo, Fantastic Salsa. Thank you so much for the love, too. You'll lose my damn mind. Up in here. Hmm, kind of garbage. Was not like that yesterday, too? Yeah, it's had some bad games. It comes and goes with time. I think we settle for any Murloc at this point. Bruh. For sure, scaling is not the way. Fort, save us! I don't think Fort saves us. I think Baron saves us. We so close. Yet so far away. So close, yet so far away. Okay. That our line here is still Exodia. Exodia is by far the best line we can play from this position. We can't scale in any relevant way. Yeah, we could just play for full tempo by scaling. But we can win this lobby off Exodia. Taking the Faux Reaper for three gold, you know, net two gold over time. Seems to make sense here, especially because we can stealth it at the end. With everything else going off before that point, there's a pretty damn good chance that this thing can clean up. Haha, <laughs> we have Exodia. Exodia. I mean, if they go first into the egg, and then a Mega Buster pops, then he kills the egg, we actually do get the eggs back instead of the microbots, which is pretty nice. Doesn't like win the game by itself, but it's good. Is it time to play on Bofides? No, we only played on Bofides when we were campering for Lobby Legends. Like, I don't give a shit about this number. This thing means nothing to me. We have absolutely no, uh, no incentive to play toward raiding right now. There is no Lobby Legends season active. Feels a little premature. I still think we shoot for six. We're more likely to hit things on six. Yes. Too bad. I hear you, buddy. I do. You're a good boy. I. You have a small cleave problem. But it has to be like a 14 damage cleave or 13 damage cleave. 15 damage cleave. To be a problem. This thing dying up front is not a big deal. If he like went first and cleaved here. As long as this doesn't die. We could also argue whether we want the buster to be in front or behind the foe reaper. 
Do you want a small cleave, or do you want an extra mech behind the whole thing? Hey, we got there? Yeah, we got there. We're fine. Now it's a question of, like, we need one more... One more, uh, buster. Selfless hero, golden baron type thing to be as good as we can be. Stealth baron here is nasty. It's gonna be very hard for him to avoid getting the whole combo off. If we find another baron, we probably shoot for fives. But if we don't, we shoot for a six. So, like, let's take a few rolls up front. Okay, at this point, we'll shoot for six. That's not a Mega Buster. That's not a Mega Buster at all. We can now shield our Stealth Baron. Is there a reason we want that? I mean, we could also just shield two things on the board if we wanted to. Two of the Omega Busters. It's good against Zap. Is the main reason we want to play it. Typically, you'd play the, the Selfless Hero here. That way, when the combo goes off, you shield just the Baron that's left. This thing will technically be alive, too. So, like, we could shield this thing as well. Which isn't bad right now. Feels like Hearthstone taking out Whitebeam was almost the best part of the patch. I mean, it was by far the best part of the patch to me. I think the, the Toxfin change is okay. It's it's not a fix. It's just a, it's a change in the prevalence of, of poison, which is okay. But the, the white main change made it so that you could actually play compositions like this again. Not a Mega Buster Exodia like this thing. This was this existed still when white main was in the game. Because you always had the ability to go first. And even then, if they go first, you could taunt up multiple minions on the board. Or you could just get lucky that they attack in the ghoul because you run a taunt anyway. But like Exodia Pirate and Late Froggers were pretty dead as compositions. And now they're back again. The Leapers are back. What's the Toxfin change? It's on Tavern 6 now. Move from Tavern 4 to Tavern 6. No change in stats or anything. Same deal. Once we get lower in gold, we'll probably shoot for a 6 star again. Swing and a miss. Pass. This is bullshit. Everything sucks. It's Baron or a Mega Buster. Gold and Selfless could shield basically the whole board again. I think so. I like it. Best part of the patch to me was the fact that they seemed to be heavily influenced by addressing the community concerns. You know what? Base take. <laughs> no, I love it. Absolutely like that. Love that take. That's good. That's some good shit. They put the patch notes in the game client, which was something we've been begging for for ages, or the patch changes in the game client. It was more of like a, a bullet point thing. Better than where we've been. They are listening to the fact that, remember, we talked about, what, 50 times in the last month? 100 times in the last, in this season? About why are the, the most fun quests less common than the, the boring quests? Why isn't buddy quests more available after we know... It'd be real. I remember saying like 20 times. I really wish they would just make the buddy quest more likely at the end of the season so we could just have some crazy time with the buddies. And they just did that. So like, that's good shit. How does Big Cleave first trigger those death rattles? Mm, I don't know what you're asking, Jadion. Six attack cleave wrecks you though. Yeah, I mean, part of the combo, sure. But, like, we're not concerned about Cleave here. Moo ha ha ha. Unfortunately, we don't kill him. Because he kept all the little microbots. Or killed all the little microbots. We need him to attack into the Foe Reaper. And he's going to get a little bit bigger. Boo. Um. A 
Hey. Snail for good luck. If you read Six Attack Cleave, do you put your Faux Reaper second? It, it puts the Faux Reaper in front of all the buffs from the, the Mega Busters, but sure, you can if you think he's going to cleave you for sure. Like, at this point, we're not really that concerned about cleave either anymore, though. Because, like, if he cleaves this, then this thing just dies with these two things, and we still get four respawns. We're less... We're more susceptible to zap at this point, but the zap's got to be, like, a buff to zap. It has to be, like... It has to be capable of dealing 39 damage. And we're going to play the ghoul or the selfless late now. Instead of shielding guaranteed Baron and what we had with this Faux Reaper living on this board, we could play this thing up here and it would shield only Baron, or we can shield four things at the end. Does Zap go through stealth? It does. Almost gets there, dude. He kills it, to be fair. Or actually, it doesn't, because it's only two shots here. It almost gets there. That's a strong board. That's a strong board, yo. Lots of stats. On the other hand, we are also a strong board. And we killed him. 138, 138 on the board. Selfless between the Kangor, so it procs after the four busters instead of all six. They would just be worse, right? You'd prefer to shield... Oh, you want to shield Baron. Is what you're trying to do, right? Higher likelihood of hitting Baron. I, w I don't want to hit Baron. I would prefer not to hit Baron. It's stealth. It doesn't need to be. I'd rather shield the things that are big attack on the board. But yes, that would be a way of sh having a higher likelihood of shielding Baron. If we didn't have Parasol, then yes, put it here. Agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, find Golden Baron is our play at this point. Guess we should just hear a power four at any point. No. These things aren't Baron. <laughs> These aren't Baron at all. Only way to count his comp would be a 20 attack zap. I mean, it would also be just to have good stats. Like, you can win off stats against Exodium X, it is an invincible. But you spike really hard, really quick if you hit the combo quickly in a game. But yeah, we are absurdly strong. Like 99 out of 100 on this turn. Not unheard of to have a board that could beat this, though. This game? Nobody's getting there. Do My dude... Bofer is Baroness? Damn, Baronless. Oh, I thought you were talking about the Sludge Band. I thought we were Baroness now. I do have a beard. That dude has a beard. Dope, dude. It's Baroness on Twitch. I listen to some Baroness on Twitch. That's like the right kind of attitude for the stream, right? A little sludge. All right, all right. We got our W. We trended up the entire day. We literally just started the day and went, eh, finally getting one. My God, what a struggle. It was a clean game. I mean, we knew that, that Mex was most likely our play. Once we saw Parasol, we we're like, we can just shoot for sixes. All we need to do is hit two Omega Busters. Once we had a Ka our Kaggar and a, and a Mega Buster, it was pretty clear. We could have died before we got there, but kind of had to play toward it. Scaling wasn't really a good option. Like, if you look at that Naga board and think about what we'd have to do to keep up with that level scaling by the time we started hitting six stars, like, we can't keep, we can't catch up. So we got to spike real hard. Connect the dots type comp. Put together these six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, and your board's strong. 